Hey folks, come on here, come on at your services. How are you all? I hope you're all doing very, very well. Has my nose got fatter? I'm looking at myself in the, the mystical eye of the camera and my nose has got fatter. Does whiskey make your nose grow fatter? Does it? Does it make anything else go fatter? No, it doesn't. In fact, the opposite, I would say. Anyway, folks, what's going on is this. It is now Holy Saturday. Anyway, the day before Easter Sunday. And uh, a lot of people knew I was doing a watch party today. But it's gonna happen, don't worry, it's gonna happen. But the problem is, this fool here overslept really badly. I mean, I was, even though it was it was a Good Friday yesterday and it was a long Good Friday, we didn't spend much time in the pub. We were back at a reasonable time and everything was cushy. Nice chippy supper, you know, and Betty Bobies, nice and early. That was the mistake, going to bed early, falling asleep early, then woke up very early. Well, the dog woke me up. The dog wanted their breakfast, so I had to come down and feed the husky. And uh, that's not a metaphor <laughs> or a euphemism. Um, come down, fed her, ran about half six, seven o'clock-ish sort of time, was strutting about, and then uh, went back to bed. But, well, no, it's still too early. But my plan was to do the watch party very early on. I thought, well, I'm not, not going to do it just now. That's ridiculously early. So I went back to bed. <sighs> oh, dear. And then went into one of those profound, deep sleeps where you... You're dreaming constantly, and I've talk, talked about the dreams a lot, and dreams within dreams, within dreams, within dreams. Well, I didn't get that, but I got some really epic dreams, and then my eye might open for a second, and then I drift off again, and straight away, you're right back into the dream world. And it was wonderful. Most of the dreams revolved around, a lot of my dreams revolved around someone close to me going, I don't mean passing over, but uh, going missing, uh, we're, we're usually, abroad somewhere in my dream and Mrs. Kiltman, oh I've just got to go and do this and we've got we're at a strict time limit. I don't mean she's gone missing under mysterious circumstances, none of that stuff, none of the missing 411 phenomena, but she just goes missing and I've got to try to get through an alien city to get her to get on a train or to get on a plane within time. And last night, well this morning's dream was, uh, well, a person who was masquerading as my daughter, who looked nothing like my daughter, acted nothing like my daughter, uh, was taking Roxy, my dog, out for a walk in a land I did not recognise, with a big hill which descended into a huge meadow, which she ran down the hill with my dog off the lead. And I thought, no, only I do that, so I need to be in control, but I couldn't catch up. And she got into this field and slammed shut the gate behind it and locked it mischievously. I, I thought, is that to keep me out? As I'm running down, puffing and wheezing. Is that to keep me out? Stall me in my pursuit or to keep the dog from getting out? But in the back of my dream mind, I knew that this was a huge area with a big ridge line just further on. And over the top of that ridge line was a beach, a very long sort of beach full of people who were vacationing. And uh, so it was, like, it was imperative to catch that dog before it rampaged through people's picnics, which in real, real life, that's what Roxy does. So uh, and I'm unlatching this gate, coming through into this huge, massive area full of millions of people and loads of dogs. And I just thought, I, I can't find, where's she gone? And I caught sight of her going over this ridge line with the dog. And I, even though she was like half a mile away, I could hear her laughing amongst all above all the hubbub of the crowds who were there. And uh, so I had to pick my way through the crowd. I know I was wearing a kilt. I could see my kilt, you know, as I'm running. And uh, I'm not sure what other attire I was wearing, but going by the speed that I was achieving, probably a fucking suit of armor, because I was going super sluggish. Yes, that dream thing where you're running but getting nowhere. And uh, 
and I got to the, the ridge line, the, the base of the ridge, and I began to climb this. And some old guy with a little girl, with a balloon, sort of, and they were walking sort of, you know, the, the slope was like that, and they were walking just normally across this towards me. And I was like, I was getting in their way. And he was singing, you know, happy days are here again. Na, 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 na. And I was like, oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I meant to go around that way and I got stuck here. And he just glared at me. Suddenly, happy days were no longer an element. And I managed to get over this ridge. And of course, I just saw there was the, the beach, lovely beach. Well, I couldn't really see much of the sand because there were so many millions of people there. And it was just, and I thought, I've lost them, I've lost them. And then it, I woke up, oh God, I checked. Well, I'd already been up earlier and fed the dog and the dog was now relaxing beside me. And then I drifted off again. And then I, oh, I woke up and right now it is, well, it's quarter past midday on Saturday. This whole watch party is meant to have been done and dusted way by now and uploaded and probably blocked. And then I'd have actually got it unblocked. But all that time, I've achieved nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, so all my, my schedule's gone out the window because after oversleeping and overdreaming, and because uh, there's many more dreams than that, but that's the one that's freshest in my mind, uh, I was groggy as hell. So I've had some breakfast, uh, I've had a wallop of whiskey. <laughs> and uh, well, it is midday now, so you know, it's allowed. And, um, and in fact, I did finish off all I had left. But as you guys know, I've, I've educated you well. The empty bottles and empty glasses are never entirely empty. Whiskey is still, there's still plenty in there. Takes a while for it to come down. And you know, you think, oh, that's draining. Throw it away, kill like, No, 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 no. There'll be plenty more in that. It'll slide back down again. You always retrieve some more. So now my day is busy, unbelievably. I've still got time to do the watch party because the film itself is only relatively short. And I know, but you've got to I've got to factor in my introduction to it and then my aftermath as well, because you know what I'm like. Waffly, waffly. Uh, what's, what is the movie in the watch party, Killman? Well, there's a proliferation of clues about you. A lot of dead eyes from deadites and evil possessed people. Severed hand up there. It's Evil Dead 2, folks. I touted it a while ago. I was going to do it. And I really, the week just gone, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do Evil Dead 2. I'm going to do it as a watch party. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And uh, only a handful of people actually knew what it was. And uh, so this is this really is by way of an apology to the people who are expecting to see Evil Dead 2 by now. And I'm now explaining why you're not going to see it just yet. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So Evil Dead 2, I will be doing that very soon after completing this video. But so I'm wasting even more time. Now, today as well, I'm also going to the flicks to see The Pope's Exorcist. The Russell Crowe, I'm not, I'm not going with Russell Crowe, but he's in the movie. And uh, I've been looking forward to this. I'm under no illusions, by the way, folks. I know this is hoary, hokey, old exorcism, blood spitting, head spinning, body contorting, you know, demonics. Histrionics writ large Hollywood style with the super large Hollywood superstar that is Russell Crowe. Hiding his girth under his, uh, his priestly vestments and cassocks. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. But so I'm going to watch that later, and I'll be reviewing that for you, hopefully tomorrow. So whilst everyone's enjoying a very holy holy day of Easter eggs and Easter bunnies and great big dinners, I'm remem remembering you know the sacrifice that, that our Savior made for us, and then His resurrection from beyond the grave. Um, while you're all thinking about religion and that, like I'll be talking about exorcisms and demonics, devilry, um, hopefully in a positive light as well. I mean the film, not not demonics and possessions aren't a positive thing, are they? I don't know, I don't know. I've got a few wailing witches in our cellar at the moment, which uh, they seem to enjoy it down there. 
because they're, they're forever screaming and laughing and cackling, so I, I take it they're having a good time. Anyway, something else happened today, um, an arrival. I had lookouts and all the battlements and the ramparts, and maybe that's what jolted me from my final dream. Sir, sir, master, master KM, master KM. It's arriving. I ran out onto the battlements, and there it was, a shape in the clouds, a shape, a ghastly shape. And even though there was some, some kind of stormy clouds around, they were illuminated by wallops of fire, big welters of flame. As a huge winged dragon, a messenger, a harbinger, swooped over the castle, Kilt Mansion, and dropped a package into, because my, my servants are a bit gammy-handed, Probably all the burnings and scaldings and brandings that I've done on them. And also, a lot of, I've chopped a lot of their hands off as well. So, you know, more fool me. So I caught it. It arrived. A smoking package dropped by a flame-spewing dragon. So what's in here then? Luckily, it scorched off my address. Well, it came from... Well... It's ironic, I suppose, that a, f a fire-breathing dragon came from Antarctica, from Outpost 31 in Antarctica. Commissioned, of course, by your friend of mine, Astrodyne, a traveller in time. For it is he, Astrodyne. And in here, because he's massively gaffer-tainted up again, knowing that I struggle with this bloody stuff, there is something in here which I've been meaning to cover for a long time and I was awaiting this particular release once I knew it was going to happen before covering it. And just before I ordered it myself, Ashradine leapt before me. No, no, don't you worry. I'll get it for you and send it to you. So. Oh, he's, he's, he's done us proud. He's made sure that no harm can befall it. Even though it was clutched in the jaws of a, a dragon that breathes fire. You know. It's a crucifix. Get back! Get back, I say! Right, so we're playing Joseph DeLuca's uh, fabulous score for Evil Dead 2 because that's what we're going to be covering. Uh, but really speaking, I should now change the score. I just dropped it. I'm now going to change the score to... Um, something very big, bold and epic. This is from the great Alex North. How jarring and like unsettling is that? I mean, that's actually scarier than Evil Dead 2. Well, it is, genuinely is. Bubble wrap. So, Alex Noor, phenomenal score. What is it? A lot of you already know what that is. Oh, God. <laughs> Can't get into it. He does this on purpose, you know. Does Astrodyne. I know he does. We have. It's Dragon Slayer. 1981-82 Disney's Darkest Hour a film that I have been meaning to cover and review since I began this channel never got around to it but I always hoped that we'd get a Blu-ray release finally it did but it was just purely um, Disney but Disney then did a 4K disc which is now on much more general release because now I have it there's no Blu-ray in this this is just a 4K Ultra HD with a digital code as well. And my God, I can't wait to watch this. Um, you've got a commentary by the director, Matthew Robbins, and, and by Guillermo del Toro. Knows a thing or two about dragons and mythology. Um, screen test in HD, The Slayer of All Dragons in HD. Now that's a docu that's a multi-part documentary, I think. Uh, also includes original theatrical trailer. Doesn't sound like a lot on that, but Dragon Slayer are, on any medium beforehand has had nothing, nothing on it at all. So to get this now, 
and apparently the, the AV quality is absolutely stellar and it's a gorgeously visually mounted movie and the flames, the darkness, the contrast between the two, the detailed landscape, the gothic medieval um, village and the castles and the caves and caverns. Whoa. It's Dragon Slayer, folks. So, Atrodyne, cheers, my friend. I can't, well, I can. I can raise whatever dregs are left in this. And there's still some more, you see? You probably can't, but a load more has arrived. Mm. You know, I'm like the parched man in the desert. It just manages to get one last drop of water out of the canteen. I better go water, leave it. Just give me the whiskey. <laughs> so, Evil Dead 2, The Pope's Exorcist, and Dragon Slayer. You know, I'm gonna get all these in the next couple of days. So hopefully Evil Dead 2 will be today, and uh, then I'm going to Flicks to watch Pope's Exorcist. So I'll hopefully review that in the morning. I don't know. I don't know. I've set myself up for a fall, don't I? You know. Oh, I, I always do this. You like to keep people engaged, so you tell them, I'm doing this. I'm looking forward to doing this. But stuff, you know, that thing that gets in the way, stuff, real life stuff, normally t conspires to trip you up and delay you, postpone you, and uh, and then you kind of lose your way. This is why uh, many like Evil Dead Two. I meant to do this commentary a while ago, so you know, finally I'm going to get around to it. It's because stuff gets in the way all the time. And even when real life other stuff doesn't get in the way, I screw things up by oversleeping. Anyway, folks, I've spoken enough. This was just to let you know what's coming. And again, that's the mistake I always make because something else will happen now. <laughs> no, fingers crossed. And uh, I'll be back with some deadite fun and action. Um, Again, get yourselves a copy of Evil Dead 2. Most of you will probably have a copy. Uh, I think it's on YouTube. I, it's probably on Amazon. It, it, it'd be on many platforms. You'll be able to get hold of a copy of that. And the idea is, I've always got to say this because some, some people come to this new and don't have a clue. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it and you're going to play it at the same time. I can't show you it because for copyright reasons. So I'm going to play it. I'll do a countdown and we'll press play together so we'll be in sync watching the movie at the same time. But even though the camera's on me, don't look at me, look at the movie, because I'm going to just talk all over the movie. A commentary track, a trivia track, an anecdote track. Just going to have some fun with it. I've got to get some more whiskey first, because that's, I want to have fun with some whiskey as well. And um, we're going to go battling deadites with Ash, Ash Williams, the ever beleaguered Ash Williams. With less and less of his body each time, like. <laughs> this is a fabulous score. I know it. The score itself, people find it very alienating. They don't. Like, some people don't like it, and they feel disconcerted, and just, they just don't like it. They have to turn it off. No, I, I don't get it. But if you do get it, then you love it. It's one of those things, Marmite, and. Uh, I think it's fantastic. It's very bizarre though. But that's Alex North for you. So anyway, folks, there was a hodgepodge of what's coming. So please, in the meantime, and this ever helter skelter, oversleeping, groggy, dream filled in between time, please keep it Celtic, keep it Celtic. And I am going to see you all, well, much sooner than. <laughs> Here there be deadites and dragons! Wow, the Kilt Mansion's getting full, isn't it?